Hello, hello, hello. Hello there, Asti. How are you doing? I'm glad to see you here. Sorry for my throat being a bit of a wreck. I always get a bit phlegmy after food. I had to wolf that down. Doing okay? You're on the beach. Hella nice. Watching Twitch on the beach. That's like extroverted introvert. I didn't get a cheeky nanodos. I got some Chinese. And let's hop back in. Playing Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney. Uh, I think it's still to pr present everything. Okay. I can't remember if I presented all these things or not. Doesn't seem so. Do I, huh? What is it, Larry? There's something missing from the staff. There's something missing. Okay, that's nothing. Whoops. That's nothing. What about this? That's the same thing again. That's this. That's nothing. That's nothing. No. No. <clears throat> okay. Now, is he going to say something about the staff? No. What do I have to Magatama him about again? Alright, let's present the Magatama and see what question pops up. Take that! The Knight of the Crim. Alright, now you're going to tell me what you really saw last night. Whoa, you're really upset, aren't you, Edgy? Okay, I'll talk. Huh? That was a bit too easy. Yeah, anyway, it was awesome. Never seen anything like it. At around 10 o'clock last night, it started thundering. I'd been sleeping, I'm not sure for how long. Suddenly, zing! The wall in front of me went white. Like I'd just been slapped in the face by my old girlfriend, Naomi. And then... And then, it was on fire. The bridge was on fire. Zavari... Dusky Bridge caught on fire? Are you saying you saw it with your own eyes? Hey, why are you giving me the evil, why are you giving me the evil eye? I'm telling the truth. Hmm, there's still three psycho locks remaining. That means you're still trying to hide something. By the way, Larry, where were you when you saw that happen? W where, you say? Well, what do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Just answer the question. I was in my own room, by the main hall. Where else would I be? As usual, you're as transparent as an empty jelly jar. Scrolllock, how are you doing? Glad to have you here. Uh, I started streaming the mood crash, so I stopped. Apologies. The problem, I suspect. How are you doing, Scrolllock? Why is there? There? What do you mean, there? It's possible for you to have seen lightning strike Dusky Bridge from your room. Because of the map. Yeah, don't worry about it. And Fridays tend to be not the main games, they tend to be... Fridays tend to be a wild card evening, so... Uh, don't expect anything long or consistent or story-based on between Fridays. <laughs> this is a map of the area. Take a look around the vicinity of Hazakura Temple. What am I looking for? I think that should be fairly obvious. The main hall is surrounded by trees and it's impossible to see the bridge from here. Uh, Crest and Goose, Pasta Casserole plus Nacho Dip, Opinions. Okay, so, Nacho Dip. Are you saying that like, the actual sauce, or are you saying you dip nachos to pick up pasta and the sauce? I met some famous Starfinder people online lately. Oh, nice. Pathfinder, no sound. Talking cheese dip for nachos. Cheese. Okay, well, cheese and pasta works. Um, it was another game. Fair. Yeah, so cheese and pasta works. 
the spe that specific mix, you'll have to let me know, but... <clears throat> what? Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, how about it? How about what? Do you feel like talking now? Like, clearly not, he still has a Cyclops. About what? Looks like it won't be that easy after all. You leave me no choice, I'll have to move on to the next step. Physical violence. You weren't in your room at the temple, so then where were you? You don't know that I wasn't in my room? So where was Larry and why was he there? If I read the situation up to this point correctly, the answer is fairly obvious. Very well then, let's test my theory. The place you witnessed lightning striking Dusky Bridge was from... Here, Heavenly Hall. The place you saw the lightning strike was from, naturally, Heavenly Hall. Why would I be hanging out in this old shack? It's freezing cold, there's no electricity, and it could fall apart at any minute. Why isn't Phoenix referring to that? That's practically the only thing that works with Larry. Larry, how do you know that anyway? How do you know there's no electricity? After all, it's not that dark yet. Ah, rum bro. In other words, you've just provided evidence to prove my theory. My theory that you've at least once in your life visited Heavenly Hall after sunset. Dar, how are you? I have to admit I'm impressed, Edgy. You're in a totally different league from Nick. Not really. Uh, also, new um, emote for tier 2 subs and above. Magpie mode emote. So if you are a tier 2 or tier 3 sub, you get to you get to express magpie mode whenever I go searching for every little bit of uh, every little bit of uh, loot or goodies. <laughs> That's nice. Now tell me, what were you doing at this cold little shack last night? What did Edgeworth call them again? Psycho locks? Yeah. As we call it, a fair decor. I think you mean a fair decor. Could it be you were waiting for someone? Oh no! You really are one scary guy, you know. You that last night you were waiting for this person to come meet you. <coughs> uh. Yeah, you're waiting for her. There's only one person you wait for in a horrible place like this, Larry. I told you before. Don't call me Larry. The person you were waiting for was Iris. Oh, suddenly I feel cold all over, Edgy. No doubt because of my chilly glare. So you think I got the hots for Sister Iris, huh? Do you have some kind of evidence? Do you have something that proves I was waiting for her? Or are you just guessing? This is where I draw the line in this ridiculous little game. Here's the evidence that proves you were waiting for Iris. <coughs> evidence that proves... Uh... Hmm... You know what Edgeworth did to Adrian Anders in 2-4? Yeah. Evidence... Evidence, 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 evidence. Is it this? Yes. Here's your evidence. You called her to the spot with a pathetic blackmail letter. Oh, hey, give that back. You're embarrassing me. What are you doing with that anyway? That's not important. I misjudged you, Larry. What do you mean? Taking advantage of a woman's frailty like that? You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, oh. First of all, what's this at the top of the letter? It says salutation here. Well, that's what it said in that book, Letter Writing for Dummies. You're not supposed to actually write that. That's where you're supposed to write, Dear Iris. Wow, I'm so sorry. Uh, magic Missile. In, in Starfinder, Magic Missiles are just a brand of missile you can get for your ship. Okay, Night of the Crime. So you were here in Heavenly Hall last night, weren't you, Larry? And you saw the lightning hit Dusky Bridge, didn't you? Sorry, Edgy. Sorry doesn't cut it, you scumbag, threatening a young lady like that. Gulp. Yeah, this... Larry has gone from bumbling fool to a uh, malicious fool. Wait, hold up. Any enchanted rock launcher shoots magic missiles. What now, pal? What are you talking about? What threatening stuff? I'll tell you what, you tried to scare eyes by threatening to expose her secret, pal. What do you mean, threaten? When did I threaten her? Unless you want your secret to be exposed. That sure sounds like a threat to me, pal. Blackmail, in fact. 
Give me a break. It's a love letter. Haven't you ever been in love? What did you say? My lover hurt burned so hotly, you could melt all the snow on this mountain. Oh, then what is the secret you mention? Come on, Edgy, don't you get it? Talk about the secret love between her and me. That wasn't a threat, that was a promise. Did Larry give any evidence yet? Um, did he give any evidence? I don't think so. He told us that there was something missing from the staff. Obviously, she wouldn't want old Lady Bikini to know about it, right? About our hot and sour, bittersweet love affair. Alright, then why did you send a love letter in a business-like manila envelope? Give me a break, it's not my fault I didn't have any, they, I didn't have any other envelopes, yeesh. Then why are you so quick to apologize, pal? Because Edgy gave me that scary look of his. <laughs> What's wrong, Edgy? Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? That's it? That's what all those huge locks were about? I don't understand why you were so defensive. Well, I don't know either. I guess the thing is... You shouldn't expect too much from a guy like me. <laughs> hey, come on, don't let it get you down. But Mr. Edgeworth, this guy's still hiding something, I know it. Oh, what you mean, Detective? Don't forget what this guy said just a minute ago. If you already want to know, last night... I saw something incredible. Hmm, he's right. Larry! Oh, what? You're looking at me like a hungry dog that just found a bone. What was this something incredible you saw last night? You're going to tell me, Larry, one way or another. I already told you, didn't I? I saw lightning strike Dusky Bridge. Yes, and I believe it was the incredible sight you saw. Now that I think about it, something doesn't quite ring true. Well, what doesn't? If that's all there is to your story, your heart wouldn't have had all those locks. Therefore, Larry, I do believe you saw something last night. Something more incredible than lightning. What? When? Where? Why? How? Hey, what do you think you're doing? If you had anything for Mr. Edgeworth, I'll arrest you on the spot, pal. More locks? <laughs> no. Oh, what's wrong, sir? Does this mean I have to do it all over again? Why are you glaring at me like I'm next to be hit by a bolt of lightning? Just about had it with this harlequin. If I really want to drag the truth out of him, I'll just have to drag him to the witness stand. Interesting. Oh, is that it? He saw something about Iris that he doesn't want to say because he doesn't believe Iris can do any harm, but it's actually going to be good for our case. That's what I'm guessing. <clears throat> oh, first day of the trial. <laughs> oh my, M Mr. Loris feels that way about me? Uh, apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. There's no time to be embarrassed. I'm sorry, I'm just highly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not, and in any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, mark my words, I'll drag it out of him. It's time, Edgeworth versus Godot. Does that mean Mr. Loris is... Loris? Loris is the witness today? No. I believe that none will be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen the very incident in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Celise Donim, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well, then. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? You are a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry, I've made the necessary arrangements. I see. Iris. It is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I'm a defense attorney. Defense attorney's job is to believe in people and to believe until the bitter end. That's what my friend told me once. Oiris. I said Iris. Not Oiris. I said Iris. Mr. Edgeworth, I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I am fit to do the task I have been entrusted. Iris. What do you want to say, Iris? I'll say Iris. <laughs> I'll say Iris if it makes people feel better. <laughs> Iris. Yeah, Iris. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands.
or do it do with the fucking like all one British on it instead of what you wrote, typed there wireless uh just wipers <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. I'm not sure I like to blatant waste of this court's time, and be prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over to before it had a chance to begin. <laughs> I like this. Oh, so um, the prosecutor's a few minutes late? Okay, well, defense wins. Objection. Fucking... Fucking Von Karma. The prosecution stands ready. I did not know it was Franziska Von Karma that's gonna be here. And you are Franziska von Karma prosecuting progeny that lost consistently to Attorney Phoenix Wright. Von Karma, you say? Perchance you wouldn't be of any relation to legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma, who was charged with murder and presumably either life in prison or dead now. Legends are a thing of the past. I'm a von Karma, that is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. You did? Then you must be quite a big shot, eh? By the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? Uh, when I played this about five years ago on Summit Bench, I was so hoping she would show up. Almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or we're just imagining things. Like very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you're imagining things, Your Honor. It's fun, Karma. Do you have anything to say? There's no such weakling as this man amongst those the prosecutor's office. There, there isn't. But I'm sure, once before, in this courtroom... Ah! I told you, there is no such weakling. What is that? A whip? I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. Name is Ryuchi Narahodo. Naruhodo. Also, we mustn't let Von Karma know about Mr. Delight or ask he's in trouble. Not the one he wants to be in. I understand, okay. Bailiff, remove that whip at... I have no objection to the whip. <laughs> you don't. The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee, but there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. <laughs> this promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I'd expected to face Phoenix right here today, but looking at you now, maybe this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the histrionic. Allow me to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Wah! The stage is set, now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well, Miss Van Karma. Please give an outline. Wait, so hold on. Hold on a tick. Phoenix beat Edgeworth in a few cases. Edgeworth leaves the country. Phoenix beats Francisca Van Karma in a few cases. Francisca leaves the country. Why hasn't fucking Winston Payne left the country? Very well, Miss Von Karma. Please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise Donim. Because Winston Payne is poor. He used to be a big shot. Her body was found in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. She'd been stabbed with the torso by a ceremonial sword, ceremonial sword, yes, from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well, the court accepts this photo of the crime scene. Crime photo added to the court record. There is no mistake, this is the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. Perfect page weapon aesthetic. <laughs> witness, state your name and occupation, please. Hold on there, I'm not sure about 
I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> I love that! Just, just, just a whoop. If I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain plagued witnesses. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me, well, I'm the head nun of Hazakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini? Nice to meet everyone. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. The courtroom is the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those with lechery in their hearts should leave the sanctuary at once. Did Old Bag appear in this game already? Uh, we, got, we got the hint of Old Bag in the second case. You want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. Um, she's Larry's boss when Larry's working in the security company in the mask, start a mask case. But she was on holidays. Ha 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 ha. In any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say then. Does she? <laughs> First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? That night, I was helping an acolyte with a training in the inner temple. But, well, as you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hazakura Temple. There's no bath in the inner temple, you see, and I needed a long hot soak. It was after I'd finished, just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it. Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazakura Temple? Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the inner temple. That's like a pretty important statement you just made. There's only one problem with the testimony that I can see. You're not about to follow the first hurdle now, are you, Miles Edgeworth? Dot, dot, and another dot. Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. The night of the murder. Let's press everything. What is this inner temple? Well, see, conversing with the spirits is what we train people to do, right? We'll be the ones asking you the questions, madam. In order to do that, a place strong in spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Acolytes must spend an entire night there to undergo intense training. And how exactly do you help with this process? It is all quite exacting, it can't be performed without a nun supervising. Like a tutor watching to make sure a spoiled child studies. A tutor with a whip, in your case. If that is the case, then why did you return to Hazakura Temple where the murder took place? Back likes to act up. Violently. That's right. It's no laughing matter, especially in winter. I can't hold anything heavier than a knife and fork during the cold months. Just being alive is like strict training. <laughs> and the night of the murderer. Was this fabulous back- <laughs> this fabulous back of yours hurting again? That's right, raging like a bull in a pig pen. I almost fainted once or twice. I just knew that unless I warmed it up, it was going to finally finish me off. Okay. You left Iris to help. With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10pm, so we were starting to enter into the training exercises proper. Wasn't it your place to remain with the Disciple? Well, the job is simply to watch over the Acolytes so they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night you met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? Yes, yes. She's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. Okay, no bath. So you returned to the Hazakura Temple in order to take a bath? My back is to blame for everything. It's a do-or-be-done kind of world, after all. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind me asking? 
My, 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 what a filthy little rogue you are. I know what's on your mind. I bet your next question is going to be, where exactly did you wash? Ah, this is why you have to watch the young ones. What are you going on about? I was... Ah! Pathetic, Miles Edgeworth. The lowest of the low. There's some sort of kick me sign stuck to the fence's bench. Now, Edgeworth is learning the pains Phoenix has to go through. Anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my post for too long, you understand, so... It was after I'd finished, just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it. The crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right. In other words, it was pure coincidence the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. Hmm, that certainly seems to be true. There is indeed only one problem with this testimony, if I can clearly point out what it is, and then begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Uh, let's see. What do I have to present? Well, she's she's trying to implant the idea in the judge. Since this, this all these trials are bench trials. Apparently, in the letter in the later games, when Phoenix retakes the bar and all that, he gets to the point where he manages to establish a jury system. But right now it's bench trial, so. So you had the sister. Um. Ah, uh, wasn't that. Load, load, load. Uh, let's see. What can contradict? Uh, yeah, there we go. Why are you looking for real or fake spoilers? Uh, I'm just saying the little bit that I heard. Witnesses have to go undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry, I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. No, she said that? A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claim that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm. She does indeed have honest eyes. Wah! All people lie, that is my belief. Oh, hey, House Endy. Huh, oh, Endy. Would Amar Edward's perfect punishment record? Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means, we must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me, and yet you want to play that game, do you? Ah, well, that is exactly what I... My memory is perfect, crystal clear, especially in winter. I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Well, understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. Please let your comments about Iris the testimony. Let us return to the cross-examination. I was helping... Eh... She was dressed exactly... Oh, save. I'm gonna press it, but I think I know what evidence I need. Are you sure that you're not making a mistake? You, young man, need to get your estimation of me up from the floor. Hmm. Iris always wears the same clothes. The smallest thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. You're making a mistake. Thinking I made a mistake? I th it's um I think Ace Investigations, I think is the are the Edgeworth games. 
And from what it looks like, you actually control Edgeworth in like an isometric point of view going around places. Accent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder. Um. Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant who you claim to have met. She was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course. That is a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold it right there. Why do you have that? Same way that Phoenix had the key from the first trial against you. That's the question of the day now, is it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night, before the lights out bell was rung. What? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. So many fucking boxes. Not a bad thing at all, exposing contradictions like this. I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Order, order in the court. Oh. Sister, this hood, you have spare one around the temple, don't you? Spares, well... You didn't make too many of them. I see, a stockpile, a surplus of huds, eh? Each one was only given one hood. This should be the only hood that Iris owned. Not really isometric, but yeah, you run around and examine so they're also on the spot interrogation of trials. Oh, interesting. And this is quite strange. If there was a surplus of huds, then she could have worn one of those. There is no contradiction here. Hum. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Is how many hours long? It seems like the um the Ace Attorney and Ace Investigator series. I'm gonna call it the Ace the Ace Attorney series. Um You seem to really have gotten your your um your money's worth from a handheld game. Uh, also, side note, I heard that they made a, um, I heard that they made a, uh, Harvey Birdman game in the style of Phoenix Wright for the Wii. I kind of want to look into that to see how it is. Witness. Well, I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every- <laughs> I'm doubting your testimony. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. Those seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. Is that is that something that is that something that only only learn when I'm an adult? Finished bath on eleven. I thought I should return to the inner temple. Um, ten to eleven. Okay. Loss of blood, body fell ten feet after death. Uh, and I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard, I took a look at... Iris was, oh, Mystic Elise. And with that sword of all things. Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room which faces out onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. Uh, Asti, can you can can we get a few bunks for Asti, please? You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it'd be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mister Edgeworth and two in court, and me seeing it all from this very chair. Thank you very much, Dar. Or well, something like that. This is judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool- <laughs> She said it! Fool! I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Uh... Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> Forbidden from leveling up in our Magic Academy game. Ah, oh, I want to- I want to play a game in the Strixhaven setting. Being a magic student in Strixhaven from like a D and D campaign sounds amazing. Uh, calling everyone by their full names. Can you do something about that habit of yours? 
Uh, press everything, as usual. How far is it from your room to the inner temple? Let me think a moment. I had 20 minutes on these stumps of mine. It's about 15 minutes to Dusky Bridge from Hazakura Temple. The inner temple's just beyond the bridge. Still, you never made it back there that night, did you? That's right. I was heading along the walkway towards the main hall. Going back. Okay, let's have a look. You say you heard a noise. Thump, just like that. That can only be the sound of the victim falling. It's very quiet in the temple, you know. You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. Thump, just like that. But then, couldn't this noise you heard have been snow falling to the ground? I never thought of that. Ha 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 ha. Ho 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 ho. Ah! Well, in fact, we finished the Leshy battle boss last night. We barely won. Nice. Next one to laugh gets a whipping. Well, whatever the source of the sound, I looked over at the courtyard and... Iris was... and that sword. Okay. This is the second time the witness has testified to seeing the defendant, but some doubt remains in these claims. Hey, just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't give you the right to... Desk slam. The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword, Sister Bikini, tried to recall exactly who it was you saw as clearly as you can. Hmm. Well, you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Oh, now that you mention it, there was something awfully strange about her. Something that has been bugging me all this time. Please, don't keep us in suspense. Her hood. Her hood? Her hood was on fire. That's right, it's coming back to me. Iris, she wasn't wearing her hood. I thought something was out of place, but it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, she'd given that hood away to someone, right? But the prosecution already argued that she had a spare hood. Ha. Huh. You've dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. What do you say, Mr. Edgeworth? Is this testimony important? It's important. This may initially appear to put me at a disadvantage, but I can't see any other leads at the moment. Your Honor, I would like these new statements to be added to the testimony. Huh? Miles Edgeworth. If you want to hang yourself, you don't need to ask. I'll gladly lend you my whip. Damn. Witness, add that statement to your testimony. No problem. Iris didn't have her hood on. You are sure about that? Yes. After all, we always wear the same clothes. Ah, I don't mean because we're poor, you understand. It's our style. Yes, that's it. There's absolutely no need to explain yourself. Anyway, she looked different from her normal. That really stuck out. Like me holding a whippet puppy instead of my whip. At least then I might bite you and not someone else. Iris didn't have her hood on, I'm sure of it. Very well. Now, please tell us... <laughs> he even has it a boot! Don't please tell us a boot the victim, eh? I'm staying in the corner room. Okay. The room the victim was staying in overlooked the courtyard, correct? Which means the victim's room was on the second floor. No, no, Hazakura Temple is a single-story building, but the mountain itself slopes downwards. Which elevates the main gate outside the temple and the guest rooms in the back. Where is our darling lovely maple leaf? I don't know. Do I actually have a... Users in chat? Uh... I do not believe so. Uh, the height of a two-story building. I see. And the victim was staying in one of these elevated rooms, correct? Yes, I should know. I'm the one who carried her things to her room, after all. This almost have occurred after she was pushed out of a window. Um... Body fell ten feet after death. I'll press it, but I know what to do. What makes you so sure of all this? Just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise from the courtyard, okay? Thump, just like that. Your one smart sister will give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body is covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. Hmm, it appears that the witness was not mistaken then. Yep, yep, I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. 
There's only two of them working there. What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? No snappy comeback remark. It doesn't feel like she is lying. This is very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the incident in which the defendant stabbed the victim. There's only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. Um... Body after death. Yeah. Figured. Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say, anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else. Especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Ms. Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. Her cheeks are mesmerizing. They are probably one of the most rapidly animated things in the game. Apart from the cup going across the uh, prosecuting table. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah, well, that's right, it says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. The defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard. How did the victim then go on to take a 10 foot fall? Order, order. The victim was killed and then fell. Weary face check Discord. I'm going to Discord. Yeah. If that's the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room. Don't you agree? That is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. She was then thrown out of her window down to the courtyard below. Were, were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Stonin's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain. Would, wouldn't you agree? Possibly. Well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Why? Wow. No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. The rip has just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious playoff beard. However, if there was no blood in the room, then you're claiming that why? Wow. I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this, as I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood, very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. You want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from the body? That would be when the blade is removed. Indeed, with the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That fucking depends, lady. Yeah. That's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion, then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. But then how did Iris get down there, then? Order, order, order. I must admit, this is a probable version of events. I'd expect no less from Ziska von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. Hmm. It seems that we need a clear testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness, please, remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape, especially my back and my mood. Sister, please, give us your testimony. I'll give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. Oh, with the whip? Oh, boy. All right, all right. Further details. Uh, when I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab, Mystic Elise. I'd never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I woke, Mystic Amy was... S stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. Hmm. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma's strive for nothing but perfection. That's why my father lost a phoenix, right? That's why I have lost a phoenix, right? Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You shouldn't know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Francis Givon Karma. I'm here to teach you just that. Yeah, it seems like I was just pulling the sword out. Uh, okay. Press. At that time, was the victim bleeding? 
Well, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course. Not entirely sure. I don't think I saw any blood, not then. I'm sure that you, I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. Yeah, because that definitely would plug all wounds completely. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see the instant in which the victim was stabbed? Didn't actually see her stab. Think carefully, this is very important. It's Iris we're talking about here, I'm thinking for all I'm worth. No, when I looked over, the sword was already in Mystic Elisa's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but... This testimony supports her theory. The victim was stabbed in a room, then dropped into the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. I was getting so much blood before. So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? That's right. Some of it had splattered onto Iris, too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room, and her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood-flecked as well? Hmm, that seemed quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further? Always press further. Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw a little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now, you say you saw the victim bleeding? Well, well, I say that what I saw is what I saw. What did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed, but I saw the girl pull the sword out of her, plain as day. Pulling the sword out? But it wasn't exactly pulling, it was more like it came out. Witness, you'll add this statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. With the blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out. Smoothly, you say? You're saying you saw the sword smoothly slide out. That's right. The whole thing happened right next to the gold statue of Mystic Amy. Mystic Elise was on the ground and Iris was stooped over him. The sword was buried up to the hilt. When Iris stood up, the sword in her hand just slid out of Mystic Elise's body. It slid out from the gaping wound. Goes that saying that if the sword was removed, there would be bleeding. Nothing out of place here. Is that really the case? I can't help but feel that something about this testimony is very out of place. That something which couldn't possibly have happened appears to have happened. I'll come back to that in a second. Was the bleeding caused by the killer removing the sword? No mistaking it. Remember it all clear as day. Don't you think that's a bit odd? Well, what do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? Why would the killer pull out the sword? What? If all she wanted to do was place the weapon in the hand of the gold statue, then there was no reason to remove it from the body. All that would have accomplished is causing the victim to bleed unnecessarily. Your thoughts, Miss Von Karma? That's... Indeed, it is strange in that you mention it. I'm going to need to find an answer to this mystery, too. Anyway, the witness saw something terrible. So what did you do after that, witness? We're just leaving it in the air? Okay. Just hand wave it away. That's when I fainted. Now, on to what the killer did next. You saw none of it, correct? Well, I was unconscious. How long are you out for? I don't know, 10, maybe 20 minutes? A young man with a very prickly looking head woke me up. By stepping on me, actually. Hmm, I'm not sure I like that method of resuscitation. Well, I wasn't asking for mouth to mouth or anything of the sort. But I would have welcomed a more gentle awakening right about then, let me tell you. How can you be horny after seeing someone get murdered? I shall have words with the offender personally. What did you see upon awakening? When I awoke, Mr. Amy was stabbing. What? By Mystic Amy. Oh, yeah. You are referring to the Golden Statue, correct? Just stabbing someone with the Shijishito, a sacred treasure, is terrible enough. But then make Mystic Amy hold the blade. Truly a heinous, despicable crime. It is easy to despise something, anyone can do it. However, there is something that cannot be done so easily. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's doubly hard for you. Anyway, what is the problem? With the adrenaline, it can be surprisingly effective aphrodisiac. Are you saying this from experience, Fat Viking? Exactly why would the killer set up this gruesome scene? Can anyone explain the reasoning behind that? Hmm. No, I don't think I can. <laughs> Maybe. There isn't always a logical reason behind why someone acts. 
That's true, so true. In early spring, for example, I often find myself. There isn't always. That phrase might come in handy someday. There are too many unnatural elements in this case. I necessary to use the Shichishito from the Amy statue as a weapon. Why was the weapon untimely placed in the hand of the statue? If I expose the flaws in this testimony, perhaps then I will find the truth. <laughs> uh, it was smoothly drawn out. Um, it could have been smoothly drawn out, or maybe it could have. Hmm. That wound looks strange. Nope, that wasn't it. Mm. The murder weapon itself? Mr. Bikini, you are a reliable witness, at least I'd like to think so. Twice now he says, I would like to say that you're a good person. Unfortunately, you're a rat bastard. There are too many contradictions here. What do you mean? Make it sound as though I'm a liar. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to the hilt into the victim. Why, there's no blood up to the hilt. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. <laughs> what do you mean? Please explain you- ah, Explain yourself. To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? I mean, technically yes, if you were really, really strong. No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear. What meaningless dribble. I, too, may appear to be weak and frail but I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, should I so choose. Someone, hold Asti back, please. The objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. This isn't the only issue here. If this sword is truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt... Well, just look at the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't have come out smoothly. That's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in the body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to complete for the The wound would be too large for the blade. The blade would be too large for the wound to completely stop bleeding. They got these two backwards. That's something but more can conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with the Shichishito. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly, and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. I'm not finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. You've still got more? This one is simple. If this sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? You know, I'm fire then used by a magus? Ma magus? 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 M m um, Megusta, um, Megasus. What? If this witness is telling the truth, there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No. Ah, Magus. Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys to know would maybe manage one, if that. But what does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but I haven't come this far that there can only be one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shichishito. What? A foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think the sword was the murder weapon? Well... It's because Mystic Amy was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, 
That is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that Shichita was the murder weapon. Order, order, order. Wow. So maybe the Shichita was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Hmm, that's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth? If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes. Namely, Hello there. where... How are you doing, Toxie? Glad to have you here. Where did the real murder weapon disappear to? Exclamation mark. Like, yes, we uh, and Toxie, we are playing as Miles versus Francisca von Karma. Goes are saying that the police searched the main hall in the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as if a sword-like object was found. That's... Answer the question, Miss von Karma. No evidence of that kind was found. Hmm. Another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Yes, it is. Excuse me, could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking. It's possible that just maybe what actually happened was it was just over there. What exactly are you, are you going on a boot here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe. I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? <laughs> well then. I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? Yeah, yeah, it is this judge. I saw the murder around 11. After asking that it had been reported, I went out to the main gate. And there I saw tracks. Tracks indicated a snowmobile had been used. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than 5 using one of those. Maybe they threw their weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. This is all just speculation. Iris could have done that. She can drive a snowmobile after all. Hmm. Witness, please tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape. Or with my back and age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Was her lady the... I know! It always seems to me that the witness says, Oh, I forgot this thing that makes my case worse. Here, Here's a photograph. There's only tracks arriving, not tracks leaving. Snowmobile, eh? I can see it certainly is an interesting theory. The tracks begin in front of Hazakura Temple and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. <laughs> Look at this photograph. Every time I do is added it to the court record. That solves your past little problem, yes? The Eagle River's current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter, making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. Did you already go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? Mr. Edgeworth, your cross examination, please. I will pop a cheeky save. Save there, yes. You are sure about the time? Yes, I was worried about it after all. Why was that? Because I have a strong sense of responsibility, especially this time of year. The acolyte was being doused in freezing water at the time. Couldn't very well take it easy in the bath all night now, could I? So at 11, I decided to leave Hazakura Temple. Her estimation of the time seems reliable, at least. Please continue, sister. Okay. You asked Phoenix Wright to report the crime, correct? Right, right, the one who trampled me. Seems she's the type to hold a grudge. Does she turn into a completely different person during the summer? Uh, she, beco she becomes a grumpy, forgetful old hag or something, I don't know. There isn't a phone in the main hall, so I send him to the bridge. Phoenix Wright? He didn't have his cell phone on him. He'd forgotten it at home, apparently. What a naive boy, as always. Hey, Francisco von Karma. He beat you every step of the way. 
Maybe she's old bag, oh god. Not only do I always carry my phone, but I always have my whip in hand too. Anyway, I was really scared and it was taking him a while to get back. I thought I'd go out by the main gate for a spell. Tracks. As I recall, there was a snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. That's it, that's the only one we have. It'll run no matter how much snow falls. Francisco has a crush on Phoenix, it's like when boys throw rocks at girls. Girls on wait, did she leave the whip behind? So she left the whip behind, but the very last thing we presented was we gave Edgeworth the whip. And when Edgeworth went to Francisco and Connor at the airport, Edgeworth gave Francisca the whip. Uh, yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So she'd already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. I'm not sure if this is really relevant. What should I do? Press. Always press. It answers to every possible doubt. The snowmobile in question. Was it still warm at that time? Huh? Ha ha ha. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, eh? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? I'm playing to a slow crowd here. <laughs> Oh god, I I need to remember this line, I'm playing to a slow crowd. It goes without saying that using a snowmobile will heat its engine. If it was still warm, then it means it was recently used. Ah, I see, I never thought of that. Hmm, that's right, I overlooked that too. Uh, of course you did. Then answer the question then, please witness. I don't often go around touching hot engines. Hmm. However, now that you mention it, there wasn't any snow on it. Snow? Yes, for some reason, only the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. There wasn't any snow on it? Curses! It seems highly likely that the killer did use the snowmobile then, eh? How long does it take to get to Dusky Bridge by snowmobile? 15 minutes to walk. Okay. In that case, why didn't you use it yourself? You could have spared yourself some walking. Ah, there's a reason for that. Have you got a moment for me to explain? Uh, I think that's why the question was asked in the first place. It was about a month ago. I was driving my beloved little snowmobile, happy as can be. I would fetched some water and was heading back when I went and crashed it into a tree. The tree and my back both went crunch, just like that. Crunch. Hmm, crunch. I haven't been able to find the courage to write anything since then. Anyway, the killer must have used it. Maybe they threw the weapon. Refresh our memory. How long were you knocked out for? Like I said, somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes. It's possible to get to the bridge and back in 10 minutes using the snowmobile. I have to concede that is more than enough time. Is that all you wish to concede, Miles Edgeworth? Iris could have done that. While it would have been possible, time-wise, one element remains out of place here. Oh, and what would this mystery element be? The killer's reasoning, Your Honor. Why did the killer do all of this? Why go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon when there are other methods? Hmm, too many unanswered questions. Your response, Miss Von Karma? Wow! Turning to me for help over the slightest thing? Why don't you think for yourself once in a while, Your Honor? What? He's as over the top as always. Anyway, whatever the reason, the fact remains the defendant could have done this. The murder weapon was disposed of in the river. Another point to me, Maz Edgeworth. Speculation! We don't know who was disposed of in the river. Another mystery to feed the fire. Was there any reason to go and throw the murder weapon? Luckily, there is surely a problem with this testimony. And all I have to do is start poking holes in this flawed account. Okay. Pop a save. And let's start using some evidence. Uh... Uh... I think I know what I have to present. I just don't know where I have to present it. Objection! Not there. Uh, hmm. Present. Objection! Not there. Uh, uh, present. Objection! 
Okay, so it was there. So I had the right idea, I just had to find when. I admit this photograph proves something. The proof the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. You finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? What do you mean? Iris left Hazakura Temple, took the weapon to the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the bridge, and those from coming back. Ah, you're right. Hmm. You're forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. Hmm. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snowfall. This removes your precious contradiction now, doesn't it? I see. While she was at the river, the snow stopped, leaving just the return tracks in the snow. What do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? Their flaw in theory. And there is a contradiction. The footsteps. The tracks to the river were covered by snow. What a nice theory. However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Would you care to explain? I will explain after I save, so I can save Skun. Why there is a root index finger currently pointed in my general direction? No need. The evidence will do all the talking for me. Why did the murder the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge in order to dispose of the murder weapon? The outgoing tracks were erased by snow, or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Here's the defense, man, just give me time powers. That's how he keeps winning. Uh, it's this. I think. Witness, please tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course, this means the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is a weather report from Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. Yeah, but Phoenix's one has more oomph to it. The weather report? Snow started to fall at 7pm, but it stopped at around 10.50. Exclamation mark of surprise! Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11pm, the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks made out of that time to have been covered up. Ah! Order, order. Very well then. It looks like Miss Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. Ah! It's too soon to be close to this trial due to snow. Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic for you to rely on the weather of all things. I mean, you were relying on the weather. I proved you otherwise. Answer me this then. When is a weather report ever correct? Past tense. I don't know, you got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast. This is, an, this is actual data. Ah! Forecast data, all reports have some inaccuracies. May still have been snowing in the vicinity well past 11. Hmm, it's true. We cannot be totally sure, eh? But my evidence is stronger than her assumption. What? How did she pull that off? It had stopped snowing in Hazakura Temple when the murder took place. We need to provide conclusive evidence of this. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I, too, cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning the testimony. Time for another cheeky save! Huh. You can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Says you! Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Where's your evidence that it already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? Um. Let's have a look at the pictures. Uh, check. Because there's no extra snow on top of her. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being, whether or not it was snowing in that courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right, but proving that is... incredibly easy. If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I'm referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered in snow, with just one exception, and that is the victim herself, Miss Elise Dunham. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. 
It had stopped snowing when she was killed, that's why. Hmm. In other words, if the killer really did go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph, there should be two sets of tracks. Yeah. Order, order, just what are you- yeah! Just what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? Okay, here's a question for chat while we have this awesome music playing in the background. Uh, you have to provide a short list of video games for children to play to try and increase their critical thinking, puzzle solving, uh, etc. abilities. What three games do you give them to try and... to try and expand those, like, thought horizons? What, what would you give to, let's say, a 12-year-old or even younger to say, right, play this or play this with your parent. Lord Examon, you're very welcome here. Scribble knots. that's very good. What age of kids? Um, I will... Hmm, I want to say 13 or under. I'll let people specify games for what. But yes, yeah, Scribble knots. Very good suggestion, Lord Examon. Um, Mist is definitely one of mine. Uh, I love emote, by the way. Uh, Mist will be one of mine. Um, what else would I play? Yeah, Ace Attorney is good. Mist and Ace Attorney. Um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, point and click. So Mist, this... And what would I pick for my third one? Harvey wants to go through um, Tomb Raider Tomb to two to four. Um, they're fun, definitely. Um, Peggle, oh Peggle's good. Uh, let me just have a quick look through some of my games. What would I give a kid to play? To try and help expand critical thinking. Um, not Call of Duty, anyway. Uh, hmm, not Dead Space. Not The Evil Within, not Fallout, not Fear. Hmm... What would I give them to play? Uh, Peggle, why do you listen to play Tomb Raider 2 at 13 years old? I remember a person, a, another kid on my road older than me, had a PlayStation 1 at the time. Had a Tomb Raider on it. Played it a few times. Uh, Last Revelation, brain training, yes. Uh, I said it's more of a tool than a game, and missed. Definitely missed, yes. I actually enjoyed brain training when I was younger. It was more of a challenge. Uh, let's keep scrolling through my games here. Uh, hmm. Portal. Portal. Portal is one. Check the Discord for the meme. I remember seeing that lo loads of times, especially when a car might be beloved. Yeah, exactly. Kids work better on crew served weapons. Hmm. So, what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure myself, but Ace Attorney Investigations. We were talking about that earlier, actually. Would you, would you prefer to be calling Lord? Do you prefer to be called Examon or Exa or what do you prefer? Uh, it's already that much better. It's more spatial. Wide. That's the thing. It's it's one of those. It's a game that gets you to think about three D space. Sometimes it's more than about the X one is fine. No worries. The one is more than about the abstract or the ideas. Sometimes you need to give someone an expanded sense of spatial awareness. Um. Because everyone's seen terrible drivers with no spatial awareness. Sometimes you have to be thinking with portals to in, to to figure out spaces and like packing a warehouse. Packing a warehouse af after um, 
after being used to things. That doesn't really help kids use critical thinking. Critical thinking critical thinking in spatial awareness. Like it's I would say it's definitely heavily connected. Hmm. Rate of four is a very nice puzzle in order to pass the level. I don't remember four. I remember playing one and two, unfortunately, and then I played the Angel of Death, which I got about ten minutes into before game breaking game breaking uh Game breaking bugs. Silent Hill. <laughs> this is, I don't want to traumatize the nasty. This is simply what all of the facts point to. That night, nice. someone you'll still be able to leave has a core temple. You can cope with loss and gives them good puzzles. Yeah. Um some of the lessons. Some lessons I would probably put to Star Trek. If they get through that, they can face anything in life. Oh god. Uh, let's just make sure that there's a class to do with mental health there as well, though. When the tracks left, we understood that they were heading for Dusky Branch. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because the tracks were erased by the snow. Then, when this person returned to Hazakara Temple, the snow had stopped. So it left before. Thus, the return tracks remained. Also, who thinks that there should be a dedicated mental health and like, and like, um, and such class? Digimon World 2, Digimon World Dawn, Digimon World does nice options too. Yeah. Can I say something? This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There is only one key for the snowmobile. Exclamation mark. Furthermore, on the night in question, when the defendant had it. The key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean that night, I received a snowmobile to go to the Inner Temple. Don't need to be a whole class, there should be a psychological counseling to every kid school for free, yes. I think... I think a once a week class. Or maybe even a once a month class. Just to talk about these things in an open manner, as opposed to having it necessarily shied away in a separate room. Just discussing the topics. Because we already have civic, social, political, health... Why not psychological? Yeah, but Iris said that she never went there. I'd probably press this point some more when I get the chance. The snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge. Like psychological part of health, except a lot of places just take it as like sexual health, more than anything, and diet. Like my CSP and SPHE never really included psychological stuff. I don't know what it does now, it could be wrong, but when I did it, it didn't have anything like that. So she must have left it on the Hazakura side of the bridge and crossed on foot. That sounds right. But what's odd is, when I left Iris and returned to Hazakura Temple... I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. You must have failed to see it, sister. Maybe, but when I made it back to Hazakura Temple... It was there, by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. But that... is impossible. Order, order. Order in the court. What does this all mean? Hmm. So, so then who was phone? So then what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used a snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. Hmm. Never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes, yes, I have nothing more to add. I've told you everything, everything that I know. But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who could testify to having seen the snowmobile. A witness, huh? Was there no one out walking, perhaps, near Dusky Bridge on that night? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wondering in that. We have one such idiot. Unless 
they had something really important to do. Okay, here is a slight change to the question. What TV show would you give to a child, or give to a young person to watch through, to learn lessons from? Mm, that's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. An idiot may well have gone wandering out on that subarctic night. Your Honor? Actually, there just might be one individual who may be of help to us. Really? You know of someone who might have seen the snowmobile night on the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not, but there are two things about him that do come to mind. Hell of a boss teaching that it's okay to be a disaster gay? I mean, they just have to see you, Asti, right? Discovery Kids shows? Never watched that. I don't think I had Discovery Kids. <laughs> also, oi. <laughs> First, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. And the second being... This individual that I'm thinking of went wandering outside on a cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot you're talking about? It's... Von Karma. Uh... <laughs> Boy, be rock Phoenix. This guy must be a product of Jean uh, of Jean-Luc de la Duc's Guide to Obnoxious French, pa French Painting. This is Larry Butts, a disciple of the victim, Elise Donin. No worries, Asti. So, Examon, how be you? How was your evening so far? Or day? I don't know where you are. Her student? Interesting. And why was he wandering a boot outside on the night of the murder? Well, that's... I could tell him all about his designs for Iris, but it may cost us the credibility as a witness before I even call him. But he's an idiot and he gets into a lot of trouble, but he's a real bro. Yeah, a lot of the time, not all the time. He is, after all, an artist. He was, perhaps, searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot, I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so, this unfortunate, unreliable-looking man, what exactly was it that he saw? It did leg day. Nice. Uh, speaking of leg day, I know this is more entire body, but I saw that unofficially the world record for a 12 mile rook was beaten in the past couple days, I think. Um, a ranger from uh, some fort in uh, from some fort in uh, the US. God fucking damn it. Um, beat it. He did 12 miles with a 30 pound pack on his back in an hour 28. Um, one second, I need to fucking sort out my fucking printer, 3D printer again. Uh, well, yeah, I'm okay. Had a couple of rough days, but feeling a bit better right now. Uh, looks like the printing was going so well as well. I have a 3D printer and I'm trying to print it in a nice, narrow, a nice, thin thing, but it's just not working. Thank you very much. Uh, ugh. Yeah, okay. I have a feeling that there's only so tight a tolerance I can print on this more budget machine. Uh, it's an Elegoo Neptune 2S. I got it as a Christmas present, as I said. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. I got that. <laughs> ah, everything's falling. Yeah. My streams are a tragedy. Um, it's uh, it's working well for me, but I think I'm reaching the limit of its capabilities, so I need to scale it back a bit. Thank you, Anonymous, for gifting a sub to Examon. You are very kind. Uh, zero four. 
zero four. Let's try it a bit thicker and see how it goes. Yes, you do get emotes for tier one, and we recently got a tier two emote, which is this. I'll get to the game in one second. Bro. I intend to extract that from him right here in this corner. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. Da -da -da. I have no choice, do I? I believe he's in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Larry. You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for a 20-minute break. Ms. Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. To be continued. Save here. Okay, we're going to have a very short break. I will uh, see you in a second. Okay, cool. I hope you guys enjoy that second break. Let's continue with the game. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not really sure what to say. Iris, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things we need to ask you before we reconvene. All right, I'll help you any way I can. First, about that night. You really didn't go to the Inner Temple, correct? The last witness claims to have met and talked with you on the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, it is just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hazakura Temple. Very well. The second thing, then. That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11 p.m. that night, were you the one who used the snowmobile? There is only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you. But why? What made you go out to Dusky Bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. You're on trial for fucking murder. Five. Iris. I can't tell you about that yet. Yes? Not until her safety is confirmed. Her? The safety of the Acolyte. The Acolyte, huh? She must be talking about Maya. Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill the least on him? We've asked her this tons of times. No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. As I thought, no psycholox. Very well, it is my job to get to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. Court hmm. will now reconvene. Miss Von Karma, where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gallery. Uh, suspicious behavior? He was sketching something very intensely. Dare I ask what the witness was sketching when he was detained? He drew a terrifying woman armed with a demonic face and a vicious whip. I can only presume that his intention was to capture you- Ah! Anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Damn, Larry. Laurie Stonem, I hope you're ready. Get in here. It would seem that whip is going to see plenty more use today. Ouch. Your sketch is in contempt of this course. Hey, I'll just artistically rendering. Ouch. You tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you your subpoena, correct? <laughs> no, you see, Fat Viking, it's not hip. It's. You have to do it like, um. Like King of the Hill. It's a who whip. You know what?
cool whip. Look, nothing but a fledgling artist, training out in the mountains. I'm only down here in the city because I ran out of green paint. Well, to use the technical term for the colour, Viridian. This is a Family Guy sketch, isn't it? <laughs> Larry, this isn't an art store now, is it? I know, I graduated junior high, okay? Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Working in the fields? Does anyone want to say field work? I hope. Well, that's it. Thanks, buddy. Kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled train wreck of a sentence. I just happened to stop in here and find a wonderful new model. So see, I've got nothing to do with this trial at all. I expect all your faces to be red when you realize this mistake, bright red. Or to use a technical term, crimson link. Ouch. Ouch, ouch. <laughs> ouch. Stop your pathetic blabbing and testify like a man. Refrain from whipping me, Miss Von Karma. Cross whipping is as bad as cross checking. Witness, that was all your fault. Testify now. Wow. This is too much for me. What I saw. I was at that launch out in the mountains looking up at the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but I didn't see a snowmobile. I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night either. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone, aren't I, Edgy? Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. I'm just a nobody, nothing but a small, worthless man, aren't I? And why wasn't I asked for my name and occupation, or anything else? Mr. Edgeworth, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. He's recently been the cause of numerous incidents, and he's finally realized for himself just how much of a nuisance he has been to other people. Wow, just tear into him. Yeah, that's right. I'm behind everything, every case. Watch out, okay? Just touch me, it'll make you eternally unhappy. Well then, let us proceed to the cross-examination with no touching, thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. Bro, where's my clippy thing? I need my clippy thing. There we go, I have my clippy thing. Thing has been clipped. Why won't you do the thing? I need you to thing the do. Gruh. Okay. Sorry, I just... Gruh. There is a financial thing in making sure that the printer doesn't die, so I have to keep that in mind as well. What I saw... I sat at a lodge in the mountains looking at the stars that night. Oh yeah, so... Press! Dot dot dot. Whatever is the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? This one single statement is so full of contradictions, for a moment there I thought I was going to collapse. <laughs> hmm. So, witness. Any ideas to where these contradictions in your testimony lie? Depending on your answer, I may stay my whip. Okay, give me a minute. Well, it was snowing that night, so I couldn't possibly have seen the stars. The running shack is hardly a lodge, is it? And even the stars could be seen. It wasn't like I was there to look at them, right? See? You can do it if you try. Ha <laughs> ouch. There is only one issue here. What you saw at Dusky Bridge. Walked to the bridge a number of times. Oops. A number of times. A number of times? How many? Uh, maybe five times? I went once every 20 minutes. 
Which means you spent almost two hours at Heavenly Hall that night. You bet. Riolo has been waiting with your heart in your hands. Love, you say? Though this man's intention to summon the defendant to the small shack. You've seen this blackmail letter. Blackmail? No, no, that was simply a product of overflowing love. Ah. You huffy puffy loosey goosey excuse for a whimpering whining wuss of a witness. I'm print screening that and putting that in the memes channel. Because I need to use that at a, at a certain time. So, what did you see? I hope for your sake you saw a snowmobile. You huffy puffy loosey goosey excuse for whimpering whining wuss of a witness. A. Eh? Um, well, you see. Being called those names doesn't bother him at all. He didn't see a snowmobile. Larry, you really didn't see it? Hey, no need to hit your desk, I can hear you. I didn't see it, I didn't see a snowmobile. Larry, say snowmobile for me, please. Snowmobile. If you truly have nothing to hide, then why are you stammering like you just flew over a cuckoo's nest? Just shut up. What is this? I don't know. Don't ask me. You'll need to start from a more obvious contradiction. I'm gonna strike the blow that'll finally get him to spill the beans. End of the bridge. Okay. You didn't meet anyone. That's right, because I've got nothing to do with this. I'm just here to buy some Viridian paint, okay? Come on, I expect to see those Crimson Lake faces now. It'd appear that simply pressing him isn't going to be enough, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. It seems that he's going to claim to have nothing to do uh, with this to the end. I don't want this guy to cost us uh, any more time. We need to slice through his obviously uh, his obvious contradictions and keep moving along. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, but let's see a snowmobile. Save. Okay, back, back. Didn't see a snowmobile. Wasn't that? Um, you didn't see a snowmobile. Um. Okay, only pupil there, regional weather report. Lightning 10 to proxy 11 at 10.45. Okay, what am I missing? Didn't see anyone at the bridge either that night either. Um, didn't see anyone. Uh, didn't see anyone that night either. No, I can't point out that. Um, what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Look at the stars at night. You are free? Oh no, here I was going to pay you. Um, didn't see anyone at the bridge that night either. Um, hmm. You didn't see anyone at the bridge that night? You saw Phoenix, right? Oh, that's actually it. Larry Butts. I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic and you cause all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry, but having realized just how much of a nuisance you've been, that can be considered to step in the right direction. Edgy, are you trying to console me? Sure, he doesn't sound that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. Wow. You're totally pinning this on me. Now then, let us talk about the night of the murder. Sister Bikini, after seeing the murder take place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus, he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There, he happened to cross a certain nefarious individual. You're back? No worries, you take care. 
You, Larry Butts. That's right, me in the flesh. Hmm, listen carefully, Witness. Doesn't matter if you change your name, so long as you remain pretty pathetic, you'll continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change. Just... wow. But what do we need to do then? Larry, what you need to change is your inner self, but for now, what you saw that night, testifying truthfully about this one issue is all I need from you. Edgy, I... I think i finally woken up. Well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it. I'll testify. Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. I'll ask again then, witness. What did you see on the night of the murder? I only saw part two. I went to the shack at around nine, so it would have been about 10.30 p.m. I was lying under my bed when a white flash almost blinded me. I looked out the window and Dusky Bridge was on fire. There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. Let's run into Nick. Hmm, you certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happened to the bridge after it caught on fire? It was like me after a three-day stint chasing a girl. It totally burnt out, like almost totally gone. I mean, trying to cross the burning remains is what caused Nick to fall. What did you say? Oh, don't worry. It's nothing life-threatening, he just caught a cold. Never know that man if he should be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, please commence your cross-examination. What I saw, part two. Okay, let's press everything again. What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know, I was busy being excited, I guess. Hmm, excited? Dare I even ask? But the meeting time is 10pm, right? But I couldn't wait, only thought she might come early too. Well, it appears she didn't come at all in the end. Because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Shut up, don't go picking my fond memories apart. Anyway, I'll get a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had lost her way. So every 20 minutes or so, I went out to the bridge. But I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. I didn't have anything else to do, so I went back to the shock to wait for her. Okay, Flash almost blinded you. This light was, of course, a lightning. Like, kerpow. Like a slap from Naomi, honestly. A big bada boom. Wow. Or a little like that. Wow, that's more like a punch from Miranda. Witness, did you actually see the lightning hit the bridge? Well, I was a bit startled by the flash of light, so... Looked out the window and Dusky Bridge was on fire. Seeing that, what did you do? You okay, Colsta? What do you think? I was burning up as well from the fire in my heart. That's why you went to take a look at the bridge. Well, to be honest... It was freezing cold, so at first I thought, forget it, I'm leaving my covers. I'm mocking Larry, okay, fair. But it pretty much stopped snowing, so I, I i don't know, I changed my mind. Hmm, not sure I care for the forget it attitude you had at first witness. There's still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. You said right away, but exactly how long after the strike was that? Hmm, lightning fell, and then the bridge caught on fire, maybe around five minutes? I mean, I suddenly thought, gotta go check this out. How far is the small shack you were in from the bridge? Hold on, well, it had pr pretty much stopped snowing. It was about a five minute walk. How did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like I'd recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bonfires kids make during school camping trips can compare. Who had school camping trips? I never had a school camping trip. I've never been camping. Um. Uh, why'd you go to the bridge? You suddenly thought to check out the bridge. Does this mean that you initially had no intention of doing so? Well, yeah, I guess it does. It was really cold, I didn't really want to go out there. If that's the case, why did you change your mind? I would like to hear your reason. In which case, please give testimony to that effect, witness. Am I reasoning? Okay. Reasoning, is it? 
I thought I'd never get another chance to see something so big burning. Where is Larry's whole life? Where Where is the piece of evidence of Harry's whole life just burning? We did it once, so it was quickly abandoned after that first one. I guess the teacher got bored or something. We did a trip and then did a scavenger hunt thing. Okay, fair. We decided to go and see what was happening. That's right. You were talking about a massive suspension bridge burning to high heaven. That's not something you see every day. A real spec... specule... Like, really special? I can't let me tell you other than that, just look at him, he should suffice. Can you really trust a witness who was unable to pronounce spectacle? Life seems to love hitting this poor witness below the belt. Well, my motto is to hit life back as hard as I can. Ah. I'll give you a few hits too, if you'd like, with my whip. I told you about the burning bridge yesterday, but there's still something that doesn't quite fit. It looks like, despite his change of heart, Larry still isn't telling us the whole truth. Um, let's press this and choose the other thing. Uh, how long after the strike was this? Okay. Uh, why didn't you call anyone? Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, Edgy? What's with a serious face? Why didn't you call anyone? Huh? What do you mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try and tell someone. As public phone right by Dusky Bridge, correct? Well, of course I thought of doing that. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Huh? Yeah, okay. A reason. My reason. is I didn't try to tell anyone, I just didn't have time to, okay? And Nick showed up at less than a minute later. Oh, so that modifies the end. Interesting. You claim to have arrived at the bridge at the same time as right? Yeah. I thought I'd better tell someone about this. And Nick came up yelling about murder. I told him maybe forget about the bridge. The fire was pretty much out by then anyway. What's this feeling? I suddenly have a terrible case of unease. I thought calling the police that Phoenix Wright fell from the bridge, correct? Yeah, that's pretty much it. More or less. Okay. Now let's have a look. Um, What was the thing about the bridge burning? About 30 minutes between the fire starting and going out. The 30 minutes between this fire starting and going out. About 10.30. Let's have a look at this again. 10.45. And half an hour had passed. Uh, let's save. Nope, not that. Uh, bridge. Uh, it's gonna fire, it's just some thunder, right away right to check. Okay, so it is that, just a different place. Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. <laughs> that is such a burn. What the hey, Edgy? You maybe sound like some sort of alien. But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here is time. I've never been the best timekeeper, you know? Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. This is much more simple. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge, and immediately went to see what had happened. Is this correct? Yeah, well, I wasted about five minutes first, but more or less. You've never been the best at anything in your life, Larry. He's been the best at being Larry. That's what he has. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45. Ruh, ruh, ruh. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge, meaning you probably got there at around 11 p.m. That all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act. 
That is impossible. For you see, I am a magician. What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred in the Hazakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There is no way that Larry could have encountered him at Dusky Bridge at that time. Huh. Ah, excuse me, I have an objection. You do? Edgy, how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry, I'm Laurie Stoneimp, yeah. It has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11pm. This is only said around 11, in which case it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Miss Franziska von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery, but there is still no way the right could have been at Dusky Bridge 11pm. And why not? It is clearly written here in the weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. And therefore, the bridge must have been burning until at least 11.15pm. Which means, what exactly? Wright did not see the bridge while it was being consumed by the flames that night. In fact, he did not arrive on the scene until... Uh, the flames... until after the flames had died down. Larry, he arrived at the bridge at 11pm. But Wright did not make it there until at least 11.15. As if you stop trying to hide things, tell us the whole truth now. Then, what happened during the missing 15 minutes? Irk. I... I feel like I just got brutally woken up by toilet splashback. That is not an image I wanted in my mind. I guess I was still sleeping after all. Ha ha ha, pinch me. Order, order, order. Yeah. So there was a missing 15 minutes... Prior to meeting Phoenix Wright, I hardly see that as much of a problem. Yeah, not much of a problem at all. Really? The bridge is burning before your eyes and there is a phone right next to it. Why then, do not report the accident? Yes, witness, why didn't you? Were you there simply to watch the bridge burn? I mean, some people just want to watch the bridge burn. And therein lies the problem. For even after the bridge had burnt out, he was still there. Staring into space, this witness didn't even attempt to fulfill his civic duty. That's what it sounds like. Ah, but this is Larry we're talking about, and even he is incapable of being so stupid. Which means there has to be a reason for his inaction. Edgy. I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Just as I thought, you've been playing with us all this time. Listen, I'm... I want to tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it all? Yes. I may really say it this time everything. Yeah. Then say it. Very well. I have a terribly bad feeling about this, however. Let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth. Now, for this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, witness? I'm a donim. I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching, in front of the bridge. I was whipping up. I was whipped up into a frenzy of art. The shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly onto the page. Before I realized it, the flames had gone out, and then he came running up. Hmm. Well, artists can be strange folk. That's right, I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. Including the truth from the sound of it. Mr. Edgeworth, has this removed the last bit of your doubts? No, not at all, Your Honor. One very large doubt still remains. What would that be? This is a surprisingly believable story, especially considering the source. So why did he think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of- Ha ha ha. You'll regret this. Edgy. The missing 15 minutes. Uh, let's pop a save, shall we? Tell us, Larry. My name is Loris, get it right. Mistakes like that are what keep you from being popular with the ladies like I am. Just who exactly are you? <laughs> I'm Loris Donim, apprentice extraordinaire. That's what he calls himself in any case. Then you are an artist? Of course, I'm an artist, the real thing. Yet again, that's what he calls himself. Names mean nothing. There's only one issue I care to discuss, what were you doing? It's a very big issue indeed. Sketching in front of the bridge. Like a fucking nerd. Sketching the burning bridge. 
The burning bridge and everything that came with us. What? Came with us? You want to hear this from my lips, do you, Edgy? You'll regret this, that sketch of mine is... Gah! Enough. Just take that ridiculous sketch of yours out already, witness. What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. That does indeed appear to be the fastest solution. Yeah, exactly. Where is the sketch? What should I do? I've got a terrible feeling that the instant the sketch is revealed, the entire world may be changed by what is depicted there. We have to look at it. Larry, I wonder if you could show us your sketch, please? Well, well. Even I couldn't imagine it turned out like this. I imagined what? That Laurie Stone Inn's debut would take place here, today, like this. Show it, now. Okay, but steal yourselves. This is the world of Laurie Stone Nim. What the fuck is that? It's <laughs> such a shitty drawing. Ah, um, well. So this. This is a Dusky Bridge, correct? Quite a large bridge, isn't it? Wait a minute. A couple of things are wrong with this. Why are the cables going up? Your response, Miss Von Karma? Yes, well... It's a better drawing than I expected. Isn't it? Isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames. I really did. Yes, I'm sure you did. Mm, this is going to get ugly. <laughs> No one has the courage to bring it up, it seems. They would go up for a long bridge to reach support beams at the end of my misthinking. The issue is, is that... Um... I mean, possibly? The thing is that the... If we have a look at the map... They go out. Um... So my question would be, uh, my question, they, they go out, they don't necessarily go just straight up. They do, they, like, the path does go up, but not as sharply like that. This mysterious flying object. Larry. What? The burning bridge is fine, but what is that unfortunate looking figure? Ah, you spotted that? I thought you might. However much I might want to ignore it, I can't. It's Iris, of course. Iris. I wish she'd taken better care of herself. We have to plan our future, you know? What would have happened to her if she'd injured herself flying like that? The fuck? Larry, please, answer this next question honestly. Okay. Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant flying over a bridge that was engulfed in flames? Yep, that's what I saw. That's why I drew it. I'm an artist, a real artist. Are you high? The girl, she's really high up in the picture. <laughs> I love how they do that to get her in the sensors. Wow, what was that for? This is all a bad dream. I was hitting you on the cheek to test that theory. Please whip your own cheek from now on if you wish to test your wild theories. Anyway. No court of law will ever acknowledge that people can fly. Actually, there is some precedent for this. He was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. He was about 30 feet above the bridge at least. It was really something to see. Like this Canadian judge? Yeah. At first, he was, an, he was like an idiot, but now he's kind of growing. This has to be some kind of mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, please bring the witness back down to Earth. What? Me? This witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. Yes, Your Honor. Got another reason to remember this moron. Let's pop a save. That was a long chat. Well, what did you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me. Horrible sketch of what he saw the night of the crime. The game just constantly shits on Larry. Now, hurry up and cross-examine him. Uh, let's press it again, just... 
Uh, what do you think? My girlfriend is flying through the sky. Well, sorry if you'd move the bridge. I felt like I might start flying myself. If only you'd be so kind as to fly out of all of our lives. Anyway, I completely f lost myself when I was drawing the scene. I saw her flying, her white hood fluttering. The White Hood. Larry, what did you really see last night? Not that I particularly care. <laughs> In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I drew exactly what I saw. I gave you a whole dollar, that is the truth. And if that is truly the case, then there is one thing that we can say for certain. What might that be? That the person who flew over the bridge could not have been the defendant Iris. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. Ah. A foolhardy folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolishly foolhardy fool. How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual whom you say you saw was wearing a hood, correct? Of course she was. That rundown shack is quite away from the bridge. The hood is what told me that this floating angel was my iris. The hood is my darling iris, and iris is my darling hood. Ah. It seems there are bigger fools in this world than the one at the defense's bench. Larry, there's something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. She'd given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps Jesse was Wright who took flight? What are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have Iris's hood? What? Edgy, what's going on with Iris and Nick? No. No. Why you? Nick, you dog. I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited, and discarded straight into the garbage. <laughs> ah, I missed that stupid fool line. They were fucking. You think Phoenix knows he has a penis? Ah. What is it now, witness? It feels like I've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Edgy, today is the day I get to completely stupefy you. What? What is the meaning of your outburst, witness? I hate to have to do this, but I have some definitive evidence. Definitive? Evidence? Iris did indeed come flying over the burning bridge. And I, Laurie Stonem, shall prove it. Didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. Tell us anything you know concerning the defendant as depicted in this sketch, and show us your evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, I hope you're ready, Edgy. I'm not going to. F I'm going to feed you a whopping serving of pain. You've been serving us a whopping serving of pain this whole time. Trust me. Proof that Iris flew. When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, so I frantically searched all over for her. That led to me finding a beautiful crystal sphere, half buried in the snow. With blood on it. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. A uh, crystal sphere? This one. Pretty, isn't it? But finders keepers. That sphere. Where did you find it? Let me see, around here somewhere? Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow? It pretty much stopped snowing by then, but there was still some falling as I walked to the bridge. Hmm, look what accepts this crystal sphere. That's mine, okay? I want it back afterward. Hmm, there's something on it. Give it a lick. Oh my, it's blood. What? Blood? You ready, Edgy? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry. She lemony on my snicket till there's an unfortunate event. Um, click on Asti. Ban Asti Peacock. Reason existing. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's going to push me around anymore. <laughs> Didn't you want to be called Laurie Stoneham only a few minutes ago? 
prove that Iris flew. When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried that I finally searched all over for her. That led me finding a beautiful crystal sphere. Oh yeah, whoops. Uh, okay, let's press everything. So you went to the burning bridge. That's right, to meet Iris. She actually flew to get to me. At least I could do was meet her halfway. But... The defendant was not at the bridge when you got there, you say. I guess you went back to Hazakura Temple. She's a girl, after all. She must have wanted to look her best. It must be lovely to live in the fantasy land of Larry's mind. Actually, it's so depressing that I can't even work up the energy to point. So what did you do next? Okay. So you searched all over for her. She was flying pretty high, you know? I thought maybe she slipped on her landing and got hurt. Hey, it was more than possible. Also, when I headed out to the shack the first time, I was knocking on a banana. I was pretty sure I threw the peel away somewhere around there, so you know. Can one guy really be this stupid? So did you find any signs of her so-called landing? Hmm. Now what do you remember? I kept on falling over myself. I kind of lost it for a while there. You fell over yourself? Yeah, the snow was deep and there was even a banana peel out there. Yep. There's stupid and then there's Larry Butts. The short of it is that you didn't find any signs of her landing, correct? Then what happened next? Okay. <laughs> Dar doesn't like this guy. Dar doesn't like people as dumb as Larry. Half buried. It was sitting in the snow, with a little gathered on top of it. It was very hard to spot, actually. I mean, it was dark out, too. I'm impressed you did well to find it. But what you may think when you look at me, I'm a pro, a genius security guard. I used a pen light I borrowed from my company to help in my search. And it sparkled really brightly as of saying, here I am, to me. It does indeed look very much like the crystal sphere on Iris' hood, but I need I remind you that she was not wearing her hood that night. Or that Iris is going to be wearing a spare hood. She's so hard, I clogged my nose and teared up, so that's what seating's for. Each nun is assigned their own hood, and they are assigned only one. I don't know anything about that, okay? And Iris is special, alright, dude? Even if she did steal a spare hood, I'll forgive her. This is getting us nowhere, our destination for the day, it seems. However, this crystal sphere was found near the bridge. That is a fact. If it didn't come from a hood, where could it have come from? That is the question I aim to answer. No one else could have lost crystal sphere that night. Yeah, I know of the staff. This whole debacle was bikini. She still has her sphere because of all the spare hoods. I don't think think so. Not after what we what we know Phoenix saw. Larry, that night, there was someone, someone who lost a crystal sphere. There was? Who? Who was the stupid fool? Who was the stupid idiot? Miss Elise Donim, the mentor to a stupid idiot. <laughs> the victim? I have a photo over here. On the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. Hey, that's my photograph. Give it back. Ouch. A crystal sphere like that is quite easy to find. She still looks like a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card. Oh yeah. I have one just like it on my brooch. They look nothing alike. In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff found in the scene of the crime. Ah. The crystal sphere. It's gone. Whoa. What? 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 Just what does this mean? If anyone jumped or flew across the bridge that night, it certainly was not Iris. After all, she was not wearing her hood. More importantly, the crystal sphere found at the landing side was not hers either. That means the one who flew and dropped the sphere was the victim Miss Elise on him. A fool alongside another fool, and a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. 
You can't do that. I saw it with my own two eyes. And this crystal sphere, this is nothing more than a red herring. You honestly believe that? Give it some thought, I'm sure you realize it as well, Miles Edgeworth. At least Onim was in her room on the night of the murder. There was no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, this sphere cannot be related to this case. That is all. Miss Francisca von Karma. The only people who will accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clans. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Did you expect us to believe this has nothing to do with the case? That crystal sphere? It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. After the murder? There is blood on the crystal sphere, isn't there? This naturally suggests it was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there to throw the investigation off the scent, which is the exact same reason that he drew that ridiculous sketch. What? You mean... I am the killer? No, ah. All joking aside, just when did this crystal sphere appear near the foot of the bridge? Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe this is related to the case. There's a little bit of snow on top. It makes a valid point. No evidence that at least Onim left Hazakor Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere can be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth, is to save. I did save, didn't I? I want your final opinion on the disposition of this crystal sphere. If it's not related to this case, this witness who you called will be nothing more than a monumental waste of time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. Can I prove it? Can I prove that the crystal sphere was dropped before the murder took place? Yes, I can. Can I prove it? That isn't the issue. Simply prove it. That's the only option. That's what he'd do. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I'll prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving the case. You will do what? That look in your eyes. You remind me of Phoenix Wright when he is cornered. Cornered, you say? That should come as no surprise, because right now I am Phoenix Wright and I am indeed cornered. If your face is leaking still, then stop it. Simple as. I already present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence proves that the crystal sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. The weather report. Your response, Miss Von Karma? Birds of a feather flock together. Are you familiar with this phrase? Miles Edgeworth? I think one such bird is calling for its fellow now. Go, go, Edgy. Do it. Prove it. Win. He is cheering. Almost calls of ravens. Okay. Uh, yes, I can. Save. That's what Phoenix Wright would do. I'm just going to try to save as close to the choice as possible. Um, let's... Uh, no... Check... There's no staff in this... No staff in the picture. Um, ah, this crystal sphere was even dropped before her murder. Um, the crystal sphere, it was half buried in the snow, correct? That's right, if it hadn't stopped snowing, then it would have been game over. So I would have totally covered it. That's all I needed to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. What? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it was ever so slightly. 
snowing. On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ah. Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. What? What? How did you get pink there? Order, order, order. On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused the staff's crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could have done? What could have been? This sphere... There is some blood on it, isn't there? Let me to raise a certain possibility at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Branch. The murder didn't take place at the Hazakor Temple Courtyard. Only a fool was destined a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who was the fool and which part is so foolish, Miss Von Karma? Have you been paying any attention this whole time, Miles Edgeworth? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the Hazakor Temple Courtyard. That's not exactly true now, is it? But more precisely, what she saw was the murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. That's the same thing. No, it is not. No, it isn't. You said it yourself. Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. You're back down at Norris. If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus there was no bleeding. You are forgetting one vital thing, Miles Edgeworth. At least Onim's body was found in Hazakura Temple. On foot, it takes 15 minutes to travel from Tusky Bridge to Hazakura Temple. You suggest someone carried the body all that way? The snowmobile. Made it this far, the only place to take this is to the end. I need to prove that my version of the events is also perfectly plausible. The event is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. But he was carried to Hazakura Temple. Um, the snowmobile. On that snowy night, there is one way that a body could have been moved. The snowmobile. Yeah. As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of the murder weapon, but also been used to carry a body. Edward is cool. Order, order, yeah. This. This is completely unacceptable, Miles Edgeworth. You dug yourself into your own grave. What do you mean? The only one who could have used the snowmobile was the defendant. She's the one who moved the body, doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? Eh. You're too late, Francisco von Karma. And in fact, the defense has proven something else entirely. You've shown that this case requires further investigation. What? Where was the victim, at least on him, really killed? If her body was moved, whatever for? And finally... Just what does this image mean? Do you even need to think about that? <laughs> Such a creature could never see the truth, let alone describe it. Not even describing as human. Just this creature. This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However... He would never utter a lie that could hurt a girl with whom he is enamored. He drew this, so it is something that actually happened. The defense stands firm on this point. Edgy. Thank you. That settles it then. I cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. Hmm. Right. Seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It's just as I thought, Francisca von Karma, you make a wonderful partner. Excuse me? There was one reason, and one alone, for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case, then pass it on to right. Really? That's what this is all about? You could have just told me that from the very beginning. And I wouldn't have had Franzi whipping me all the day out. Miles Edgeworth, I don't care about what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grind you under my heel. Shame that your chance seems to have slipped you by. What a shame. Ah. This is all your fault. Such a terrible witness. You are an affront to a <laughs> whole legal system. I demand satisfaction.
and I believe that the witness's testimony relates to an actual event. However, there has to be some sort of answer for the questions it raises. I have his words here today. I have his words here today being the truth or lies. Next time we gather in this courtroom, those are the matters that shall be addressed. I'm counting on thorough investigations by both the defense and the prosecution. I think I'll let it slide because it's Larry. Yeah. And with this, the rest is up to you, right? Court is now adjourned. Save. Yes. Aussie Clinic. Oh, for fuck's sake. So up at this hour, reading through the trial record of a certain case. First case my mentor, Mia Fey, had ever handled in a court of law. The horrifying truth that I refuse to accept is holding me hostage here within its pages. Do a red Godot and a green Godot. And next to be a yellow Godot, maybe. Dahlia Hawthorne. What I've read, I don't want to believe. What is written here, this isn't the Dahlia I knew. After falling into Eagle River, I was somehow miraculously saved. But I ended up catching a cold that seemed to knock me around the world and back. I feel dizzy, my ears ringing, my throat burns, my head is on fire. Um, yeah, that's not good. But I will recover. I have to recover by this afternoon. I have to meet with the most ill-tempered witness imaginable. But I know that he'll be able to help me with him. Somehow. Right. Are you sure you're well enough to be doing this? You still look a little green in the face. Maybe Viridian, an artist speak? You need a full color wheel of Godot Rangers. <laughs> it's go, go, Godot Rangers. <laughs> Actually, my fever has gone down quite a bit. Hey, how's your temperature now? Only 102.2 degrees, nothing to worry about. A cough, 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 cough. Anyway, I read today's trial record. You weren't bad, Edgeworth. Pretty impressive, despite the circumstances. We're not in the clear yet. The main point of contention tomorrow was going to be the murder weapon. Yeah. In the end, the Shichichito did not deliver the deadly blow. Which means there must be another sword hiding out there that we don't know about. Another sword, huh? Do I better think, pal? I'll dig up the murder weapon myself, or I'll eat my coat. Thanks again, Edgeworth. I'll handle things from here. Heh, <laughs> that is probably for the best. Actually, I was thinking about paying the old priest a little visit. There's something I want to look into. And that is... Our client's background, naturally. You mean Iris, sir? Not the feeling that we've met before. All I want is confirmation, one way or the other. And since I probably won't be getting that from you... I bid you adieu, right? Take care. Guess I should get moving too. Why? Need to be somewhere? Yeah, I've got to get to work on this bridge, pal. I'm bringing something up so we can get across to the other side. Ah, that's right. Maya is still stuck over at the Inner Temple. Don't you worry, pal. As soon as it's all set, you'll be the first to know. Thank you, Gumshoe. Cough, cough. Cough. Cough, cough. No problem, pal. Just try to give me that cough of yours, okay? Alright, I'm off. Hang in there, Maya. We'll get you out, I promise. But in the meantime, I've got to continue collecting evidence. You know, it doesn't have a single private phone line. There aren't any houses in the area, so I guess Bikini's the only one who uses this. I wish I had brought my cell phone with me. It really is more of a dusty bridge than a dusky bridge. A kidnapping incident happened here 11 years ago, so maybe it's cursed, too. Thing looks like it's ready to collapse, at least more than it did before. According to Bikini, Eagle Mountain is very prone to earthquakes. Which reminds me. If memory served me correctly, Edward isn't exactly a fan of earthquakes. There's a narrow path going off in a different direction than that of the main hall. Looks like someone's taking the effort to write to Heavenly Hall in the signpost. Looks like it's about 20 yards to that cliff over there, but I can't see the inner temple from here. I already hope Maya's okay. 
Okay. Heavenly Hall. Looks like no one's here. Larry! Loris! I'm sure I'll be hiding here. Guess I'll try again later. This is the famous Eagle River. I got to try it at rough rapids the other night. They say it has a really strong current. And they weren't kidding, it's both powerful and fast flowing. I was dead lucky. I mean, lucky not to be dead. That stuff was really ruining the beautiful atmosphere around here. So inappropriate. Like Sister Bikini in a, like Sister Bikini in a Bikini. Ugh. I got a thing of the kittens. Look at this graffiti scrawled right in the front of the shack. At least he managed to get a pretty good likeness. When I really think about it, I guess art kind of suits him. I mean, his very existence is an art of sorts. The snow is really piled up on the straw roof. It's otherworldly, like something out of a fairy tale. Well, the roof part, anyway. The sign says Heavenly Hall. I guess it's pretty fitting if you spend a night in this little freezing shack. You probably find yourself at the pearly gates by morning. Anything else? Steps. He steps lead up to the foot of Dusky Bridge. Coming down is a cinch, but going back up doesn't look like a walk in the park. I don't understand why rivers always want to float downstream, not up. Yeah, because fucking gravity, Phoenix. That's Dusky Bridge up there. It's amazing how clearly you can see it from so far away. Larry supposedly saw everything through the shack's window. How much light gets down here is supposed to be pitch black at night. Larry is probably illuminated that night because of the burning bridge above. Okay, I guess that's everything. Uh, main gate. Come on, please. It's for art's sake, I swear. Only one guy I know who could be this persistent and high strung. I'm talking about the heroine here. The heroine in my book. It'll make you famous. Ah. Enough. A fool's fool, fool's fools who foolishly accept the foolishness of a fool's fool. Wouldn't you agree? Phoenix Wright? Huh? Me? Wait a second. I know you. You're, um... Ow. Your reflexes and mine need to shape up. My brain's frying like a sunny side up and you want to grill me over a name? Franzi, you can't do that. He even doesn't have as we speak, Nick's on the brink of death, or so I'm told. Whip a dead horse, isn't that one of your American sayings? No, it's not, and I'm not on the brink of anything. Is she adding fools to that? I have no idea. Come on, Nick, tell her, would you? Tell her she needs to model for my new picture book, Franzi's Whippity Whip Trip. Yeah. Or you ask me to model, learn to give at least semi-coherent testimony. Before that, you'll learn how to live a semi-coherent life, Larry. I don't care what anyone says. I'm telling the truth. I saw what I saw. She flew. I'm telling you. Whoosh. Just like that dude with the red underwear. Don't think I'm going to forgive you guys when you come crawling back to apologize. I crapped the open river. It flows up and only took me 300 live human sacrifices and trying to dominate the entire city, but hey, I broke gravity. Awesome. Do it again. Sigh. Off he goes. Hmm. It's amazing how little has changed with you in the past year, Phoenix, right? Of course, examine first. Up to know what the thing was used for on the night of the crime. Ha. Huh. Still thinking small, I see, Phoenix Wright? Or perhaps not at all? That's why you will never defeat me. I've already defeated you. Sorry to burst your bubble, but I don't recall ever losing to you. It's time for us to settle this once and for all with one final showdown. Well, she's mentally blocked out my victories over her from her memory. This is one impressive gate. Compared to the grandeur of the main gate of the Von Karma estate, it's but a pet door. Looks really idyllic with all that snow on it, don't you think? All that snow? Don't make me laugh. This is but a light dusting where I come from. Again, I want to find another city filled with enough global people to eternally damn. Or to use Birmingham, go to the US. Don't make things up just because you think I'll never get to see it for myself. You can see the main hall from here. Wonder how the head nun is holding up. Oh wow, is that an inkling of human kindness I sense? Ow. Oh, you enjoy causing other people's pain with that sharp tongue of yours. Being compared to the pain you cause the leathery whip of yours. It's a quaint little bell tower. I never would have thought that something this horrible was about to happen. When Iris rang the lights out all well, that night. I think that is everything. Have you been in Germany all this time? 
That's right. Accepting my perfect win record, naturally. Oh, Joy, sounds like she hasn't changed a bit. Has already been a year since we first met? I am Francisco von Karma, the prodigy. I see. Gave a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge. As he was born and raised in Germany and became a prosecutor at the age of 13. Her father was the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. He had a perfect win record for 40 long years. But now he's gone from this world, so he is dead. Don't tell me you still hold a grudge against me. Because of what happened to your father. Phoenix Wright, you will fall before me. This I promise. I should watch more of the right enemy. I should too. I have a subscription to Crunchyroll. Yes, Crystal. In truth, I was shocked. I came back to America with the intention of defeating you. Instead, it was my little brother who was leading the defense. Edgeworth? Come to think of it. Edgeworth is pulled into being a prosecutor by Manfred von Karma as well. Is it worth watching, Colsta? Maz Edgeworth told me something very interesting, you know. He said this case has a special significance to you. Because it does. That's precisely why I am here. Your personal involvement will make crushing you into teensy weensy pieces all the better. Just games with an anime form? Okay. It's probably the fever, but she's so openly hostile, it's almost kind of cute. Ow. No smirking. No whipping the sink. That foolish fool doing such a foolish favor is such a foolishly foolish fool. When does it get thrown the fuck back against the wall? Yeah, I saw the right has, like, objection powers, and I wasn't sure how I felt about that. Edgeworth. Make no mistake, Phoenix Wright. I came here for one thing and one thing only, to pulverize you. It's a wind gust. Yeah, it's still power. <laughs> it's like I thought you were here to bring me s it's not like I thought you were here to bring me some cold killer X, you know? Went over the whole case file and the flight over. You read the whole thing? Yes, every last word, every last sentence, every last paragraph. All the ridiculous things you did made it a very interesting read, you know. Tend to cross a burning bridge? Do you even consider the dangers? No. The only thought in my mind was I have to get across. A fool who doesn't think is more foolish than a fool who foolishly thinks. Gomshu said he'd let me know once the bridge is repaired. Maya, she's got to be okay, I just know it. Plus, I need to ask her about what really happened at the inner temple that night. Hey, I still got my badge. About this? Yeah, he was to help you, Phoenix, right? Okay. So, just on the off chance, I'm going to go through everything. Uh, okay. Okay. And Phoenix getting whipped every single time. That's fine. Don't need to worry about that. Then uh, this. Then this. Using in the US calls a portal to hell. I've closed it, but I knew it might have a, a few new sewer gators. Um, you mind to reopen it? Because it might improve things. Uh, okay. What about people? Does she want to talk about herself? No. Uh, but he's four in judicial systems now. Interesting. Uh, oh gosh, how's it going to main hall? Hmm. That was one long sigh. Um, Sister Bikini? By my mind, I didn't know you were here. How are you doing? Wahahaha. <laughs> Ma. You don't have to pretend to be in good mood for my sake. I. I suppose I've made a terrible mess of things, haven't I? I let Mystic Elise die, and then there's Iris as well. Mystic Elise? Now that I think about it, hmm. There's an acolyte stuck at the inner temple. And that poor little girl has gone missing too. A little girl? You don't mean pearls, do you? Yes, I'm afraid I do. 
She hasn't been seen since the morning after the incident. Pearl, she's missing. Why didn't anyone tell me about this? Anything different in here? Let me see that. Okay. Um, anything new here? More, just more of a stack. Uh, Magatama. Okay, what about this? Okay, that's all the same things. Alrighty. Dark Iris. Must be getting old. I think I've seriously lost faith in myself. Are you talking about your performance at the trial today? You believe me, don't you? I'm not a liar. I would never lie. I know what I saw. I saw Iris pull that sword from Mystic and Lisa's body that night. I'm certain of it. At least, I was until this morning. I don't see any Cyclox, so you must be telling the truth. Um, so why are you so unsure of yourself all of a sudden? You know that artist... You know that artist testified after me? I saw Iris flying, her white hood fluttering. I like I might start flying myself. I saw that man testify so fervently about something so impossible. I started to wonder if I had acted just like him when I was on the witness stand. I wouldn't take that guy too seriously. He's an artist, but all he draws is trouble, and nothing else. If both Bikini and Larry are telling the truth, that can only mean one thing. They both didn't see what they think they saw. On the night of the incident, you met Iris at the Inner Temple, is that correct? That's right, I'm sure it was Iris. But Iris claims she was in a room in Hezekar Temple. I knew I shouldn't have come back here that night. Because you did, Maya is stuck all by herself at the Inner Temple. Hmm, I'm so sorry. The drafts in the place wanted to shake a stick at. Winter is especially bad. All bad, the training hall looks like it's about to fall down any second. Eagle Man has always been prone to earthquakes, just so you know. Earthquakes? Yes, yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if the next big one levels the training hall. Got to get to, got to get my out of there fast. But still, there's really no need to worry. That area on the other side of Dusky Bridge is isolated like an island. It's like an island? How so? Well, the only thing on the side of the bridge is the inner temple. No one lives out there, and it's surrounded on all sides by the river or the forest. I see. So you can just get out by the forest? That's what you're saying. The criminal will be trapped should they choose to flee in that direction. As long as the bridge is out of commission, he or she will have to stay there. That means Maya could be stuck out there with a murderer with no ways of escape either. Oh dear, yes, I suppose it does. Mm, please, Gumshoe, get that bridge up faster. I'm curious about a few things, if you don't mind answering some questions. Oh, do you know my measurements for your investigation or something? No, no, no. I want a little more about the victim, Miss Elise Stonin. I don't know her waist size, or her bust size for that matter. I hope it was some weird RPG where you played some hellish entity. That's just life, Colston. It's what we wish life would be like. I'm wondering why she came to stay in a place like this to begin with. I mean, she told us herself that she wasn't here for spiritual training. My, 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 you make it sound like this place is some sort of dump, Mr. Wright. Mystic Elise was here to soak up the natural beauty of Eagle Mountain, if you must know. There, you did it again. Sister Bikini. Unless you always refer to Mr. Nim as Mystic Elise. Oh. Yes, now why is that? After all, she's not here as an acolyte. We just all her visitors as Mystic. It makes their experience feel authentic. And anyway, she's older than me. You must respect your elders, you know? How do you know that? I can see for sure that she's older than you. Fucking really? Hmm. Seems Miss Lee Stonehim was no ordinary visitor after all. And there's Pearls. She was with Miss Stonehim on the evening of the murder, and now she's vanished. It's all got to be connected somehow. Why did Pearls have to get mixed up in this mess? Please, Mr. Wright, I know you're worried, but try to keep it together. Oh, man. My head's throbbing so bad it's killing me. Pearls, she was with Miss Stonehim on the night of the murder, remember? Yes, but... After an attempt, I have a temple to run, you know. I was busy preparing for the training. Didn't see the little darling even once after he'd finished eating dinner. The murder it didn't take place right in front of her innocent eyes, did it?
I just had a thought. I just had a thought. What if... What if... Dahlia Hawthorne possessed Pearl? According to the detective, she hasn't turned up at her home either. Come on, keep calm. There's one place left where Pearls could be. It just has to be there. It doesn't hold up in court, Chief. I'm just making a possibility. I'll positing a theory. Uh, this crystal sphere is not from a demon warning hood, but I would guess it serves a similar purpose. If it's not from a hood, then I guess it really is from Miss Donim's staff. Look at the blood on it. Oh, poor Mystic Elise. Honestly, it's like the end of the world. It's not a good thing, that's for sure. I think people have the gall to call this kind of scribbling by the name of art. Huh? If that's the sort of standard you need for the arts these days, I could be a pop diva. Um, sure. What about the contents of the picture? What do you make of that? It's definitely the end of the world. Um, Let's go to the courtyard. With the incident, it's hard to imagine she was lying on the stand, so... There's some clues here to be found. Um, <clears throat> if people are okay, I might call it there. I'm starting to get a bit worn out. So, let's drop a save. And let's pop over to the ending. Thank you, one and all, for joining. Let's... Let's... Let's say hello to Maple, shall we? And everyone... Everyone who uh, goes over... Asks... Uh, how is my little Maple Leaf doing? Please. And remember, you get channel points if you've joined in the raid. So... Uh, once again, I appreciate all of you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. If you're not followed, please do consider it. And I will see you on Monday evening. Take care.